In this video, I'm gonna tell you three things that I wish I knew before I bought my Sony a7S III. So if you're watching this, this is probably like your 17th video about Sony a7S III's today. You probably have it in your cart right now and you're just binge watching YouTube videos to make sure it's the right decision for you because that is exactly what I was doing about a week ago and I finally pulled the trigger on it and now I'm actually recording this with my Sony a7S III. However, there are a few things that kind of slipped under my radar before I purchased it, and then might have slipped under yours as well, and that's gonna be what I'm talking about in this video. Now these aren't things that are like hidden from you until you buy this camera, they're just kind of lower key things that you might not know or reviews might not have mentioned. And these are basically just three things that I wish I knew personally before buying this camera, so I hope these help you out. Again, you might already know these or they might not be big deals to you, but these are just a few things that you should definitely know if you're thinking about purchasing this camera. So I don't wanna waste any more time, let's just get right into this video. All right, so first of all, this right here is the Sigma MC11 adapter. If you've owned any other Sony cameras in the past and you use Canon EF lenses with them, you've probably have this or have used this adapter in the past. It's pretty much the most common Canon EF lens to Sony E-mount body lens adapter. And I've been using this with all my other Sony cameras like my FS7, my A6400, A6000, and basically every Sony camera I own, I've used this adapter for adapting EF lenses to it, like this lens right here. And so when I bought my A7S III, I was planning on using this adapter with my Canon 24-105 f4L lens. However, as soon as I put that lens on with the MC11, I realized that it does not support autofocus in video mode. So it still has the good autofocus in photo mode, the stabilization works, and basically everything works with this lens and adapter combo except autofocus in video mode. And so if you're like me, that's pretty much the main thing you're gonna use this camera for is for videos and using autofocus because the a7S III does have pretty much one of the best autofocus systems in any camera. So autofocus in video mode is basically the main thing I was gonna use this for and it doesn't work with that adapter and lens combo. And the Sigma MC11 adapter actually doesn't support autofocus in video mode with any Canon lenses or any lenses besides Sigma native lenses. Now again, you might already know this and this might not be a big deal to you if you're gonna use native Sony glass or even just any E-mount native lenses, whether it be from Sigma or from Tamron or really any other company. But that's something that I didn't know before I bought this and it was kind of a letdown because that was the main lens and adapter combo that I was planning on using with this camera. So either way, that's number one. Let's move on to number two. All right, so the second thing is a lot more of a widely known thing. I think a lot of reviews do talk about this, but I really just want to reiterate this. You do not need a CF Express Type A card to use this camera. So you probably know the A7S III has two CF Express Type A card slots, but they also double as UHS-2 SD card slots. And so for me, pretty much when I was calculating, you know, how much I'm gonna need to spend, what I'm gonna need to buy with this camera, I factored in the price of a CF Express Type A card, just cause I figured I wanna get the best quality out of this. I wanna be able to use all the frame rates and codecs, and I don't really wanna have any limitations. However, I kind of realized that there's only one frame rate and resolution combination that you can't use a UHS-2 SD card with that you have to have a CF Express card. And you can even technically get this same type of thing without using that special mode with UHS-2 SD cards. So you can basically get 95% of the functionality out of this camera without having to spend twice as much for the same amount of storage space and have to buy new CF Express Type A readers because most of you probably already have an SD card reader which you can't use. So you can basically get twice or quadruple the amount of storage for the same price as getting a CF Express Type A card and a CF Express Type A reader. And so the only mode that you can't record in with this camera with an SD card is S and Q mode 120 frames a second and 4K. You can still record 4K 120 frames a second in non SNQ mode, which in my opinion is even better because it doesn't automatically slow it down and it keeps audio while the SNQ mode doesn't. So there's basically no limitations with this as long as you have a V90 SD card. As soon as you go down to a V60 or a V30, there's gonna be a lot more issues. So if you have a V90 UHS-2 SD card, you're gonna be able to do basically everything with this camera. So personally, I use the ProGrade V90 cards. I'll link it down in the description if you wanna check it out. And it'll also be an affiliate link, so if you do buy it through that link, I'll get a small kickback and no extra cost to you. So that really helped my channel out. But either way, a ProGrade V90 SD card is what I use, that's what a lot of people recommend. I haven't tried anything else, but pretty much any V90 reliable brand SD card should work perfect. All right, last but not least, the Sony a7S III does not have an APS-C crop mode in 4K video. 
So if you've used a Sony a7 III or a7 IV or a7R, really any full frame Sony camera from the past, you're probably pretty used to cropping into APS-C mode in video to get a tighter shot if you don't have a long enough lens or if you just wanna get a little bit of a tighter shot without putting a different lens on. And it's something that the a7S III doesn't do because of how low resolution the sensor is. So at 12 millimeters, there just isn't enough resolution to crop in in 4K mode. However, you can do it in 1080p mode still because that uses even less resolution, which again, just like all these, isn't a super big letdown, isn't a deal breaker or anything like that. It's just something to definitely understand and definitely know before you buy this camera. In case it's something that you just thought you could do because other Sony cameras could, just know that it cannot crop into APS-C mode in 4K. And there we go, that pretty much wraps up the three things that I wish I knew before about this camera. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm probably gonna have some more videos about this camera coming up soon, because I've been having a lot of fun using it. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that, as well as videos about just any sort of budget filmmaking gear. I know that A7S III isn't really budget gear, but that's pretty much what I talk about for the most part on my channel. So if you're interested in anything like that, definitely feel free to go and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video.